Hello and welcome back to Linux Java where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My own name is Sean Me Joseph and here's my email address showpopulous at gmail.com if you have any questions please feel free to reach me. Um, so today we will be preparing you for your Red Hat exam and first I will go over the exam what you need for the exam. The exam is actually very very simple. And I don't believe anybody should be um, performing poorly on this exam. One of the first things that you need to do while preparing for this exam is go to the Red Hat website and take a look at the course outline and see what you need for the exam. The exam, as I said, again, is actually very, very simple. So if you prepare for this exam, you should pass this exam. It's very simple. What do you need for this exam? I'll show you what you need for this exam. Now, if you scroll down on their website, I'm on the Red Hat website now, and I'm making you see everything that I'm seeing. So there are actually seven modules to this exam. The first module is understand and use essential tools. Then the next one is operating running systems. Third one, configure local storage. Fourth one, create and configure file systems. Fifth one, deploy, configure, and maintain systems. Seven, sixth one, manage users and groups. And then the seventh one is manage security. So for today, we'll be taking a look at this one right here, operate running systems. Because this one says operate running systems, these are the knowledge areas. This is what you need. What you will need, I will separate into two different areas for you so it's easy to follow. One part would be the actual hands-on work. Then the other part will be the explanation of the work. So let's go take a look at the actual hands-on work. The actual hands-on work will be recorded videos. If you go to our website at linuxjobber.com, let me show you so you can see what I'm saying. Linuxjobber.com right here. And you go to videos and the RECSA exam. You see the actual work, the command line, and everything that you need. The second part or the second side of it is the actual explanation. And I have said, as I have said before, try to concentrate on the explanation. A lot of people make the mistake because they want to quickly go and memorize the actual work and Think that they have acquired knowledge what would happen if you do that is that you will forget you might get into an exam and forget or you might get to work and forget but over time you will forget so what you want to do is actually understand what is going on not not just how to do it when you understand what is going on then you can understand how to do it and you will never forget so now let's talk about the explanation which is understand what is going on so now, to understand what is going on, you must understand the boot process. If you need help understanding the boot process, reach out to me. Now, so computer starts to boot up, no matter what your operating system is, Windows, Mac, Linux, they're all boot, they all have to boot up. So computer is booting up, coming this way, right? It keeps on coming. And at the point, it hits the hard drive. When it hits the hard drive, there are four steps, or maybe you can call it four different stages. One is the grub. grub Grub gets loaded into memory. It understands where it understands what operating systems you have, which one you want to load. It grabs a copy of it of the operating system, which is step two, loads into it into memory, which is step three, and then step four, the operating system that you selected gets loaded. So now, how does this step two happen? Somewhere along the line, when you install your operating system or while you're working on it, the operating system takes a snapshot of itself and keeps it where Grub can find it. And that's how your computer gets to know how to load. Because remember, your computer does not know this location where your operating system is loaded on your hard drive. No one knows. But this position here, I believe, is zero comma zero grub already knows this location so a copy of that operating system is kept here for quick loading for easy identification so grub is a, is a 
part that asks you, I have found two operating systems, which one do you want to load? Also, a lot of people understand that somewhere along the line, you have to, when you're booting up a system, if you want to break into it, you have to hit E and then go do editing. But what they don't realize that's happening is, is that all you're doing is editing the options that you're giving to Grub and those options get gets passed to the kernel. And that's step two. So after step two, then there's step three. Step three gets loaded into memory. What we want to do is tell Grub that one of the things that you should do is when you get into memory, stop loading. Put us on the command line and wait for us. Let us change the root password so we can break into the system. You have to understand this part here. Understand what is going on. I'll go over it again very, very uh, uh, sim simply. So again, what's happening is, is that the computer is booting up. As your computer is booting up, it, it must go through four stages before it's before it completes button up and you can see your screen the stages are one two three and four our goal here is to make it stop at step three which means the step where a copy of the operating system is loaded into memory and then once it gets broken there it throws us into the command line and then we can go and edit there and that's where we actually change the password once your operating system is loaded into memory, you can't change the password anymore because you can't even get into it. So what we will do is that we'll tell, we'll pass an option into Grub that says when you get into memory, when you load the copy of the operating system, which is init RAM FS, when you load that into memories, into memory, put us on the command line. We would like to do something. And in our case, we would like to change the root password. So understand the boot process, understand what's happening. Now we will go over in the next video, we'll go over to the actual command line and do all of this. And to see that video, you would need to go to Linux job at home and then click on videos, RHCSA exam, and you see how it actually gets done. And I explain each step of the way. When you get to step one, this is what's happening. Step two, this is what is happening. Step three, we are at step three right now, and this is how we edit it. And then step four, it gets loaded into memory. I'll do everything and I'll test it out for you. So let's end the first video. And as we end the first video, take a look at it very well, what is happening in here. And this is, this is it here. And we'll end the first video, and then we'll go and do the second video where we actually do the work thank you very much for watching this video as i have told you before my own name is shown me joseph if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me here's my email address showpopulous at gmail.com if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me and i'll be sure to help you out thank you very much for watching this video